we are the community, we are the culture. It's dynamic and it's changing because it lives and breathes and exists in all of us. We have the power to change when things aren't working. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Roshni. If you are new here, I am a self-worth life coach. This channel is called Betty Grew Up and it's all about vlogs and videos relating to personal growth. And I am also the host of the podcast, Is It Worth It? The Self-Worth Podcast. Today I am talking all about the new show, Family Karma. So if you wanna hear my thoughts about what family karma means for Indian Americans, then stay tuned. So Family Karma is a new show on Bravo. It follows the lives of seven Indian Americans and their families, and it kind of documents the dynamics of the Indian community down in Miami. Season one has already come out and there are eight episodes. And honestly, I was so surprised and shocked that there were only eight episodes. Like I didn't know that it was gonna be that short of a season. So when I got to the eight, eighth episode I was super excited to see Vishal and Rich's engagement and then it was just over and they were like see you if we get a next season and I was so irritated I'm like what what kind of season is eight episodes like come on Bravo get it together pay for a full season like we're ready we want this like come on as I was watching the show um, I noticed that you know there was like a general theme of family pressure, right? I honestly love that this is how they did the show and they made it so realistic because I can relate to this so much. I know so many other of my other Indian friends and especially Indian American friends can totally relate to this. So starting with Monica, she is starting to feel pressure to date. She said that she's 27 and you know, you kind of have to get married by the time that you're 30. And so that's a pressure that she is dealing with and you know, kind of working on, but she also has this dream of wanting to open her own dance studio. She teaches Bollywood dance in the evenings and she kind of has this dream of leaving her corporate work behind or at least, you know, starting her studio sometime soon. With Anisha, she is starting her own fashion business for plus-sized um, women, and the community is kind of overlooking that dream and instead just focusing on and pushing the idea that she should get married and have a family and kind of placing their importance on that aspect instead of really encouraging her with her business or asking her how that's going. And then the pressure that Vishal is facing is of course, you know, getting his families to get together and get along so that he can finally move forward in his relationship with Richa. So all of these storylines, even though they're individual and they're different, um, they all really have to do with the pressure that the community is putting on these individuals. And it really sheds light on this checklist that we have in the Indian community, right? In law school, I try to be the best. I don't know, maybe it was me overcompensating for the fact that I knew I was gay and that was was one facet of my life that I couldn't be the best in, which is such an awful thing to hear me say out loud. I need to become a partner. It's super important that this goes well because I'm still checking the boxes. And for some of those boxes, I'm checking them twice and three times and four times and five. And once I make partner, I will get a star, a gold star. So it kind of shows how we're expected to go to school and get good grades and then get into a great college and then, you know, study one of like these pre-selected topics like being a doctor, or being a lawyer, and then going from that to, you know, graduating, getting a career, and then getting married and having kids. And it's kind of like this predetermined checklist that so many Indian immigrants have to deal with. Um, and then with Monica and her dad, I thought it was really interesting that she was, you know, she really disliked when Brian opened up to everyone at Friendsgiving about her, his and her conversation. She also, you know, wants to start this dance studio and it's Bollywood dance, so it's something that the community would probably even love, but she was like, you know, it's not necessarily the best thing in the community to um, move away from a non-traditional career path into like a creative path. And when she was sitting and talking with her dad about you know her parents divorce so that really ties into all these things that she reacts to is kind of the community pressure and the shame that the community um, directed towards her and her family and then with Vishal and his storyline you know I thought that his storyline was really interesting because he has been going a little bit more of like the traditional route you know he's met someone he's getting engaged they had a long relationship she's Indian um, so it kind of does check a lot of the boxes that a lot of Indian parents have, but 
you know, there was then family tension. I really loved his storyline because it kind of illustrates how even when you do everything that you're supposed to, if you don't also do it perfectly, then you're still gonna face judgment. And this is why I always say to follow what you truly want to do. Do what makes you happy because whether you do what other people want for you or whether you do what you want for yourself, you're gonna be judged. So you might as well just make yourself happy and if that coincides with what other people want for you, then that's great. If that doesn't, then it's still worth it to pursue that path and go that route because you're gonna face judgment no matter what you do. So you might as well do something you like and make yourself happy. Speaking of Vishal and his storyline, you know, something that he talks about was the idea that Indians like to sweep things under the rug. In Indian culture, you're not marrying your partner. We're marrying each other's families, fortunately or unfortunately. Why would it be unfortunately? You wanna say it or should I tell my story? This is something that involves my family and my fiance's family, and let it just be. You're really not gonna tell us? He's just sensitive and doesn't wanna talk about any of the bad stuff. I like to. Under the rug. And I've experienced this many times, and I'm, I've been kind of wondering why this whole idea and this whole concept and this behavior is so frequent in the Indian community. And something else that I actually thought was really interesting, you know, talking about the shame that the community puts on you is that the hashtag for the show, or at least a hashtag that a lot of the castmates use, is hashtag no sharm. What this means is basically no shame, hashtag no shame. And I think that this is literally the most perfect hashtag for this show because not only is the show really exposing and shedding light on a lot of the things that we have to deal with as individuals and a lot of issues within the community, but it's literally saying like, we're not gonna deal with this shame. And so it is pointing a direct finger at the shame that already exists within the Indian community. And something that's frustrating, I think, about the Indian community, or at least about like this checklist that people want for you, is really the idea that it's one thing if people really motivate you and encourage you and are by your side along the way but the reality is is that the Indian community often uses shame to get you to perpetuate a certain kind of lifestyle. This is what Monica and her dad were talking about specifically, like people shamed her parents for getting a divorce and, and when you deviate from the norm and you deviate from like this checklist that the community wants for you, they will shame you, they will make you feel bad about it. The Indian community promotes painting a perfect picture. When you go through a divorce in a community where all eyes are on you, there's almost like a little bit of like shame attached to it. Monica was 15 when her mom and I got divorced. I was overcome with guilt. And to this day, I carry that guilt because I realized that I ruined my child's life. No, I didn't. I, well, in this society, you have that pressure. I felt like they looked at me in a different way. And that's why I think I withdrew from society. I just didn't want to deal with it. You know, that's really frustrating. And so I was wondering, you know, how does this all relate? Like, how does the idea of Indians sweeping things under the rug also relate to the idea of the shame in the community? I was doing some more research into this and what I found, um, actually the Yellow Brick program did a wonderful article on shame and how it can affect people. And shame is defined as a feeling of unworthiness. So people experiencing shame believe that they are ultimately an inadequate or unworthy person. And this is huge, right? And I find it so interesting that shame has a direct correlation with feeling unworthy and feeling unworthy was the exact experience that led me to create this channel and to become a self-worth coach because it's such a powerful feeling and it holds us back in so many ways. And the interesting thing about shame is that other people tend to shame us, but then that shame becomes internalized. So we become ashamed of ourselves or of our choices or of things that we want in different ways. Shame is also something that gets re-triggered. So this means that, you know, if you are, if you were told your whole life that you need to be married by 30 and you turn 30, and you're not married and every time you go to a community event other people start asking you okay when did you when are you gonna get married what's going on with that you should be married by now when are you gonna have kids have you met this person I have someone for you to meet that re-triggers the feelings of shame that you already have and 
even if you're personally okay with not being married by 30, if you reach that milestone of you know turning 30 and you are not married, you are going to start feeling ashamed of yourself. Even if like you know that it's okay, you have that feeling internalized because so many people have told you that it's not okay. We all just want to find success and we want to make our parents proud. Indian parents will tell all their friends you're amazing, but they won't tell you you're amazing. It kind of becomes this deeper thing that we don't always have control of. And that's why, you know, there is that distinction between consciously saying, I know that my life is going to be okay if I'm not married, but I still have like these feelings of fear and feeling unworthy and I don't know where they're coming from. Well, it's coming from being shamed for for not living up to a certain lifestyle at a certain time in your life and that idea being all you heard and all you grew up on and then it gets re-triggered because even if you're trying to make amends with it or if you're trying to feel better about it every time you go to an event or every time you're around your family which is probably a lot especially if you live at home then it, that becomes re-triggered and so as much as you're trying to escape these things if shame exists in the community then you are going to feel it and that really sucks and i really feel for monica's dad and like monica's dad is so sweet i love their relationship i love that they're best friends he was saying that you know after the divorce and after people really kind of being rude to them he didn't want to go back to these events he kind of stepped away from being a big part of the indian community and he kind of you know would just step away and do his own thing and he was fine with that and this really speaks to the idea that as soon as you go to these events as soon as you're around similar people a lot of these things will come up and become conversation topics and it's that feeling of shame being re-triggered that we're trying to hide from and we're trying to move away from and so when you want to distance yourself that's probably why. Um, and of course, I can't talk about shame without talking about Brene Brown, obviously. So if you haven't already watched her TED Talks, she has one on shame and also another one on vulnerability that she says, secrets and silence enforce shame. So with Vishal talking about sweeping things under the rug and not wanting to talk about things in the Indian community, not only was that something that he would rather do, but that was something that everyone else in the cast said is just what Indians do. It's kind of like a something that's common in their community. What's interesting about this is that we sweep things under the rug to avoid shame. But the entire reason that you are hiding that in the first place is because you feel shame around it. So you have already felt shame around the situation and you don't want more people to comment on it, which is fine, like you're entitled to your personal business, obviously, but that feeling of shame is what's making you want to hide it or hold it back in the first place. And so silence will perpetuate shame, but we keep hiding things because we think that talking about it is what will perpetuate shame. So with shame, you know, the things that actually make it disappear and actually make it go away are the things that are avoided throughout the culture. So you know, we don't want to talk about things and we, you know, tend to judge people if information does get out. So the antidote of shame is empathy and vulnerability. Empathy is understanding one another and not putting off judgment, but instead recognizing yourself in the other person and recognizing yourself in their struggles. And vulnerability is actually being open enough to tell other people what's wrong, being enough of an open book to be able to talk to people about what their problems are and open up about your own struggles. And when we meet that with empathy, the other person is saying, wow, I'm struggling with that too. Whereas in the Indian community, we tend to not talk about things and we also tend to judge other people when they do talk about things or when information does get out. And so the exact things that keep shame going are the exact things that we perpetuate and deal with, do so much of in our own culture. That's frustrating because like we deserve better. Like this video and this information isn't to make you look down at your own community or make you feel like there's no hope. The whole point is that there is hope by having these conversations and by, you know, starting to talk about things and being more open. And when we hear other people gossip or hear bad things that have happened to other people, you know, like getting a divorce, we need to be understanding of them and give them support and instead of just judging them and saying, wow, you're on your own because you didn't do X, Y, and Z by this certain point in your life. And so that means that like, 
we can't respect one another. That means that we can't be in the same space. Like all that's doing is turning us on each other when what we really need to do, especially as Indians and especially as Indian immigrants is really be there for one another. And we've seen like, how important it can be to have our own community and to develop our own community of Indians. Like that's almost essential to our survival as immigrants. And so when we decide to divide and conquer and look down on each other and judge each other and shame each other, all we're doing is tearing that community apart. Why not be in a, in a community with the same people when you can be vulnerable and be empathetic? And I don't know, I mean, call me idealist, but I think that's just a better situation for everyone. And in Indian millennials are already doing this. We're already opening up to one another. We're already relating to each other's struggles about the checklist and about marriage and about all these other things. So it's possible and it's something that we need to continue enforcing through our generation. And you know, this show in itself plays such a massive role in us opening up this conversation about our community. And you know, one of those com conversations that we need to have is just about the checklist itself and why do we have such a singular definition of you know success and yet for a lot of Indian immigrants especially with our past laws and what it took for immigrants to even be able to get to America it all makes sense like all these steps were essential steps in our survival when it comes to Indian American history but we also have the power to change that we are the community we are the culture it's dynamic and it's changing because it lives and breathes and exists in all of us and so we have the power to change when things aren't working we need to be okay with the idea that success can look different for different people in fact that's beautiful if everyone in the community is a doctor and a lawyer what are you going to do for everything else in life that you need if we allow each other to really pursue these different areas and these different things that we want to do in life and see that as successful that allows us to be a community where we're taking up even more space and we are bursting through the doors of different industries and we are making a bigger name for ourselves and this show plays such a big role in that like we've now burst into the industry of reality tv and showing what indian american lives are actually like and so i'm so excited for another season of this show to come out i'm so excited for more people to talk about this show and for the show to start more conversations about the community and what life looks like for us shout out to everyone on the cast of family karma and to bravo for making this show possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do want a second video on Family Karma, let me know by liking this video or by leaving a comment down below. If you have recently subscribed to my channel, thank you so, so much. I'm so happy that my little family here is growing. And if you did enjoy this video and want to see more content like it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Also, I do actually have a online course on how to trust yourself and it is specifically for South Asian women. So if you are interested, I will leave that link across the screen and down in the description below. Also, if you want to watch more videos or are interested in this topic, I have another video on what all Desi women should know where I talk about culture and our expectations. So if you are interested, I will also leave that video linked up here. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. I love you. Happy healing.